This is the AP Physics 2 fluids progress question number one. Uh, if you have not tried this first, please do that. I'm going to assume that you know um, kind of the gist of these questions as we go. In fact, this is one of the better questions I think that they've given in terms of um, just expectations for these uh, lab type questions. So anyways, we have this balloon. It's filled with some unknown gas. And we're going to, um, in the first part of the question, we're going to go ahead and cut the string here. So the balloon's going to start to rise. And we want to derive an equation to figure out the acceleration. So the first thing we should do is draw an FBD on this. Uh, we know that um, the buoyancy force that it's in air at this point is going to be pulling up. And then we have the mass mg going down. So um, actually, if you look at it, we have two masses. We have the mass of the balloon itself, and then we have the mass of the gas inside the balloon. So why don't we just call that big M? So that will kind of signify the two different masses. So um, anyways, we'll go ahead and do our um, summation here. So our usual summation, sum of F. So we have the buoyancy force going up, and then we're going to subtract out the mass of the balloon times g. And then again, we're going to subtract, I'm just going to write the mass of the gas. They don't actually give that to us, but we can go ahead and figure that out using the density that they give us. So that should equal ma. And again, this would be the total. I'll draw this as big M times a to show that it's just the total mass of both. Um, all right, so let's just go ahead and keep going. So the buoyancy force um, is going to be rho of the air times g times the volume of the balloon, okay, minus the mass of the balloon times g minus, now again, to find the mass of the gas, we know the density of the gas, we know the volume of the gas, so we can go density of the gas times the volume of the balloon. That would be the same as the volume of the gas times G. And that's going to equal MA. So again, let's just combine these two M's here. So that's going to be the mass of the balloon plus the density of the, of the gas times the volume of the gas. And that's going to be times A. So to solve for A, we're essentially just going to divide by this, right? And we get this whole thing divided by mb plus rho g v. Okay, and that would give us our acceleration. So the second question is asking to design an experiment to essentially figure out the density of the gas here what the density of the gas is here. Uh, I gotta be honest, uh, the first time I read this, it says right here, it says from a graph of the data and if you look at our equation that we have here um, we're looking for what the density of the gas right here density of the gas right here so we want to create some lab where we kind of have essentially like volume is one of our variables and acceleration is one of our variables uh, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how would we create a graph with this and after about five, 10 minutes, I was like, uh, this was not a, this is too hard for a, a high school level question. And so sure enough, I went to the, um, the key, I looked at the key and they are not expecting you to do it from a graph. So those of you that did this in advance um, early might've struggled as well, props to you if you did. Um, but basically, you do not want to do it with the graph. So I went ahead and crossed that out on those of you that did it later. You should have seen that. So um, so how would we do this? Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. Okay, and yeah, you just want to actually, let me keep the equation. We'll keep it right there. So yeah, you just do some lab where you're going to essentially change your variable V and and figure out your acceleration right and then we can just simply plug it in so this is a pretty basic kinematics equation they kind of give you a hint they're saying a stopwatch a tape measure so you're basically just gonna kind of put the balloon here you're gonna let it go you're gonna find the time right so we know our v initial we can find the time we can find the distance 
and then you'll use your uh, kinematics equations to find your acceleration. Okay, um, and from there you can just go ahead and plug that into here, measure everything, okay, measure like the radius, um, measure the volume, all those good things, and from there you can go ahead and figure it out. So the four things I think you want to keep in mind, and this is just in general, um, you want to make sure that you are, when you write up your lab, you're taking all measurements, so describe how you're going to make all your measurements. Okay, um, now in this specific one, you're going to do the lab itself, explain kind of the kinematics that we talked about. So go ahead and explain the kinematics. And then you do want to tell uh, what equation you're going to be using. So in this case, you'll say, okay, you're going to use the kinematics to find the acceleration. Okay, and then you want to go back to this equation that you did earlier. So this equation way up here, right? You're going to kind of essentially say plug it into the acceleration and you can go ahead and solve for the, um, the density from there. Okay, solve for your density. Now if you um, had not derived that equation that we did earlier, you would want to make sure that you do that. Since we already have derived it, then um, you're pretty much good to go just to explain what you would do. The last thing, and this is key for all these design of lab questions, make sure you have some repeat statements. Okay, so there's really two repeat statements you should do. So uh, multiple trials. Let me erase this. So multiple trials, and then the levels of independent variable. You want to make sure you change that as well. So in other words, you would do this for um, different volumes, right? You do, you know, change the volume here. That would be um, changing your variables. You could probably also do it with distance. They'd probably be okay with this. Multiple trials just means, you know, do it three times, take an average for each specific volume that you find. Part C of this question, this time they give you the lab and they want you to analyze it. So in this case, they're gonna attach a force meter to the balloon and um, just kind of be in a state of equilibrium. So let's go ahead and set this up. So the free body, this time, as you can see, we have um, the kind of the force from the scale going down. Uh, you have the mg also going down. Again, this is that big M, the total mass, and you have the buoyancy force going up. So when you do your summation, hopefully you can see that these forces have to be in balance. So in other words, the force plus mg should be equal to the buoyancy force. All right, let's break this one down. Uh, so again, we're gonna go F, and this is again going to be the mass of the balloon times G, plus the density of the gas times the volume times G, and then that should be equal to the buoyancy. So the buoyancy is gonna be rho of the air G times the volume. So since we have a line here, really what we want to do is we want to kind of put this in to like the equation for a line. So like y equals mx plus b. We kind of want to rearrange that in the, this um, into this form. So y is going to be kind of our force, right? And then m would be our slope. And x in this case is going to be a volume. And then, of course, we have our, our b here, right? Little b. That's going to be our y-intercept. So we want to kind of change this equation into this form so that it looks like this. And then from there, we can kind of analyze it, right? So um, let's go ahead and rearrange this. Let's do the algebra on this guy. We move this up a little bit. And we'll go ahead and do this. Let's choose, how about red? Um, okay, so let's subtract. So we're going to go F equals, um, and we do want to combine these volume terms. Hopefully you can uh, allow me to make some um, jumps here. So we're going to go, what's this? Rho, rho AG minus rho G, G. I don't like how they have those two variables. This is 
subscript G, so the density of the gas, and then this is the um, uh, little g, right? And that's going to be times the volume. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract minus mbg. Okay, so hopefully you can see this term right here is going to be our slope. And this term right here is our y-intercept. Okay, and so yeah, in this question then, uh, essentially you're just going to explain, all right, go ahead and find a draw best fit, draw BFL. And from there, our slope, once you find the slope, we can calculate, remember we're trying to find the density of the gas here, so we know the slope is equal to, let me just write this out, we know that our slope is equal to uh, density of the air, which is given, times G, minus density of the gas, times G. And from there, we can go ahead and explain, we're going to find the density of the gas in this problem. Okay, and then um, we can keep going. We know also that that's kind of the solving the solution. We also, I mean, it'd be nice to kind of explain that the um, density of the, um, sorry, the y-intercept here, we can tell them, all right, the y-intercept is equal to mbg. Um, in the key, they asked you to do this. Um, I don't know if you actually needed to. Oh, yeah, boom, sorry. Didn't read the question. Okay, determine the mass of the balloon. So that's going to be the mass of our balloon in this case. Actually, the key does have a typo. There is an error. I'll let you figure that out when you grade this. Um, they made a slight minor mistake, but you figure that out as you go ahead and grade yourself for this problem. Okay? All right, let me know if you have any questions.